Wild Bill over at Don's garage. And Don has got a new tool which is used for removing the cam and uh, distributor gears off of a Volkswagen crankshaft. He's probably got a Type 4, which is usually what he works on. Hey, Don's uh, little carport's missing. I guess he tore it down. Yeah, as a matter of fact, there, I see it on the left. <laughs> anyway, he's pulling apart a crankshaft and he wanted to uh, demonstrate the new tool. So we're going to go have a look. How are you? Good. Hungry? Morning, Pensacola. What you got? I got some fresh chicken. Oh my god, I've already, I just had to eat. I knew you had. I, I, I <laughs> figured I would get it anyway. I <laughs> well, I figured I would share anyway, but there's potato salad, there's two types of chicken. I mean, I just got them. Uh, Skeeter got her share out of it, and then oh, I figured I had I'll some eat, for me, I'll so. Eat yeah. I, I haven't eaten yet. I Well, I shouldn't say that. I had probably about 12 pieces myself, but you know me, so. I just got a real good uh, call from a guy. Uh, I, I bought that brown bus, the one I call Jersey. The one that was sitting in storage. Champagne bus? No, no. No? Oh. The one that's in my driveway right now. Oh, okay. And uh, it was, he was the guy that actually owned it and drove it up in Michigan. He was telling me all about it. It was, it was uh, owned originally by a guy that used it to haul Volkswagen parts in. Uh huh. And uh, had the seats out of it, and then they put the seats back in it. And he drove it from Michigan to South Carolina several times, back and forth, and then gave it to his son. It was going to be a father-son project, and Cody put it in storage because mm -hmm. he didn't have room at his house. And for six years, it sat there, $100 a month times 12 times six oh, years. Oh, yeah, you were telling me about that. Uh, anyway. That uh, gets expensive quick. He wants to see some, what it looks like now and uh, send some progressed pictures. And I told him, I said, well, it's, it's kind of like on the middle burner of my things to do right now. But <laughs> if I get it going, I'm just going to make sure it's mechanically sound and drive it ready, just like it is. He said, oh, that's awesome. I said, I might slam it down. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, you got a lower one. Yeah. But, uh, How'd he track you down? Son. His son had oh, the one you got it from. Yeah. Okay. And because he wanted to know who had bought it, so that he could, and he gave me some real good history. Uh, he said it was having problems with the shifter and actually broke the shifting rod. Oh wow! And uh, armor friend has welded it together. So I don't know how accurate that is. If it's off very much, it could cause it not to go into gear. It could do some time. wacky things. Yeah. But um, yeah. You see this, by the way. Yeah. Oh yeah, good boy. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> I like it. I like it. That's neat. That uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Now that they make a handheld one too. They, they do. Yeah. Like I that. just like to have hands free. So I'm working on something. Oh, you gets, can actually see gets, what I'm doing. It gets the back and forth. Yeah, it does the whole thing. It, it's got a wobble though in in the mount. But the funny thing is, I'm shaking the shit out of it. But when you watch the video, yeah. it'll be still. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, well, the, the wobble in the mount is there's not enough padding. It needs to keep a strap. It supported. Yeah. Here, yeah, triangular yeah. strap. Yeah. Yeah, I've got another another one coming. This is good. Yeah. The funny thing is, it's so damn stable, you almost don't notice, except for when I'm driving. Yeah. When I'm driving, the horizon will be perfectly planed off, but the car looks like it's doing this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because it's close, so it's within, ride, yeah. it's within perspective. Cool. There's some beer there, too. You want one of those, at least? Yeah, yeah. All right, good. Watch this. Let's see if it does it. Excellent. <laughs> oh, it's the ceiling, even. <laughs> That's way up Ding. there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here. <laughs> Frost. Yes. Oh. Ooh. Liquid gold. Yours was more impressive. I never I seen know. one go that high before. Did you get it on the thing? <laughs> no, mine fell straight down, oh, so yeah. it got more on me than anywhere. <laughs> Where'd you get that chicken? Walmart. That's where I took Skeeter shopping. And um, Oh, by the way, they got mad at us when we were leaving. Who did? That's some girl. You're not supposed to have an animal in a shopping cart. I said, service animal. And she goes, no animals in the shopping cart. I said, well, we're walking out the door. Stop me. And she looked at me like, you can't have animal in the cart. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the way out the door. I've been in here for an hour and now you're going to say something? <laughs> anyway, she shouted, look at the sign. So sure enough, I looked at the sign. Apparently they just en enacted a new policy starting January that you can't have an animal in the shopping cart. But you can put the baby in the, sh the cart just fine. 
Fucking animals are more <laughs> sanitary than a baby's dirty ass. Yeah. Well, when you think about it, though, yeah. you, would you rather kill somebody's kid or hurt their, their animal? I mean, you probably wouldn't want to do either, but most people would usually put the animal first. Uh, or they do, but yeah, most people would put the animal first, but people usually put their kid first. My rule, <laughs> my rule of thumb is for shopping carts, uh -huh. I never use that to put my bread, eggs, anything that can get damaged in it because what's usually down there? At the bottom? Diapers. Where kids sit. I never really thought about it, but That's I never put anything open like produce down there, so. Well, Skeeter left a dump on it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she left a little dump on it. <laughs> what you got there? Type four crankshaft with connected rods weighs about I don't know, I'm not sure. thirty-five pounds. Maybe. Mm, the camera's not stable. All of a sudden, it's pointing down. Wonder why? Might have to make an adjustment. Uh, crank? Yeah, about thirty pounds, forty pounds. But it's full. It's a full drift crank. It's a full what crank? Drift. It's got all the bearings oh. well, except for the rear bearing. Oh, and it has the rods on it too. Yes. Okay, it's heavy. Yeah, I'm probably going to make an adjustment on the camera here. Right. I wonder why I got all saggy all of a sudden. That's different. I like it to point down a little bit, though, because yeah. there's nothing going on over my head. Yeah. <laughs> well, I noticed when you're in the fastback, yes. you're, you got the, the dash is splitting the horizon. If it was about three or four inches higher, you could actually see the front end of the car. Only. Yeah, this can. It's up high enough on my shoulder yeah, that it can. When I had the chest cam, yeah, perfect. you, yeah, yeah, you couldn't see a damn thing, higher. right? It's looking right at the gauges. <laughs> yeah, this is perfect. Well, I'm going to get another uh, addition to. We're going to make some of these how to things. I want to put our rear air banner in the background. Yeah, please. I'm securing it right here, but I'm still going to have to get these connecting rods off, so I've got access to them. Uh -huh. but, and then I've got to get this this off right here. That's the oh, where the fan housing hooks mm -hmm. onto it, and get that spacer out of the way, and get that bearing out of the way. Then it'll be free. Is that a seal or a spacer? No. It, well, it's yeah, like it's a seal. seal. Okay. It is. Okay. Or, or. Yeah. Yeah, the spacer's right there. That's the ring that they tell you. Don't forget to take that off, or you'll never get the gear off of it. You know, and it's just an expandable. Yeah, a little you know. C clip. Mm -hmm. So once we get that, we'll be able to mount this mountain here. Now the problem you run into, um, let me go over and get a type one um, pour, okay? Uh, if you try to use one that's good for pulling the gears off of a type one crankshaft, uh -huh. it's too small. So you have to have something that'll slide over this wider gear right here, uh -huh. all right? So I got to doing some research on, I Googled it, and um, crank sh crank shaft gear puller type four engine, and CB Performance had one, and they had it on sale. And it was ninety four bucks, and what it does is it allows you to use it either on a type one crank shaft or a type four crank shaft mm -hmm. by flipping the end plate, and uh, that's that's basically what we're going to be doing this afternoon is removing these gears right here so that we can get this bearing off. There's no way to get that bearing off. All right. It's not open, huh? Exactly. It's and closed bearing. Well, you okay. can get it off, but... <laughs> yeah, Dremel tool. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not going to work. No, you won't get the new one back right. on. <laughs> now, this particular this particular engine uh, belongs to Jose Lugo, and uh, it's in parts over in a storage area over there. Uh, we've I've got it broken all the way down, and then all the parts that were damaged because the engine ran uh, without uh, oil. Nope. Oh. And but it didn't, and it hasn't looked like. And I really won't know until I get the these connecting mm -hmm. rods off, and we can measure it to make sure it didn't damage the crank. Um, it 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 doesn't look like it's hurt the crankshaft. I mean, there's not the typical bluing that mm -hmm. you get, in, and all the connecting rods are free. I mean, they're they're basically you know just not damaged at all. But uh, yeah, I don't see the bearings trying to push through either. Mm -hmm. Nope. So. I think we're I think we're in pretty good shape on that. I think the damage that was done was on the cylinder heads. Uh, for some reason or another, it's, it's type four engines. The cylinder heads 
on the two liter engine are just very susceptible for the bow seats and they can exhaust to drop out. Yeah, they don't like Once to get they, hot. Yeah. Once so, the head expands, the seats fall out. This this particular engine is going to go it's going to go back together with the 1800 cylinder heads uh, on it and really where they got the additional 200 cc's for the two liter engine was they dished the pistons on two liter engine. Mm -hmm. An 1800 engine will have flat cylinders on, on top of the pistons. I mean, flat crowns. So, uh, and the 1800 uh, heads are more susceptible not to have a dropout. They're they're more stronger metal, I guess. But uh, they're made by AMC, but completely different uh, manufacturing group, I guess, that does it. They got it right on the 1800s, they messed it up on the two liters. And when I say that, that the way that the valve seats are mounted in there. Now you could take the 1800 heads and put them on the two liter, right? Yes. And then of course you alleviate the problem and I understand they have bigger valves also. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do with Jose's engine. And that makes sense. And, I've got, so and I just did it to Rusty's engine too. That's actually a performance upgrade. It is. To go backwards. Well, it's a performance <laughs> for me because I don't have to turn a freaking engine down. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but let me go over here and get that part. All right. So, not very much light on the airflow. Alright, this is the puller, uh, gear puller for a Type 1. You can see it's kind of a narrow gap across there and it's just enough that it'll fit over the diameter of the crankshaft round part and slip in behind the gear to pull it out. If you try to use it, one of these on a Type 4 crank, it's too wide. Okay, so, Too wide? Well, Interesting. I mean, it's the crankshaft is more it's too wide. Oh, yeah. Bigger crank, yes. bigger journals, bigger everything. Okay. Now this tool is what? This is the uh, one that I bought that will take care of both the Type 4 and the Type 1 removal. Universal. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or so, reversal. Yeah. <laughs> so, um... This side right here would be the one that you would use for the, um, you flip this thing around and this, this outside lip is the one that's going to fit down in the, behind. Yep. Okay. Once you've got all so the gogies off get, the end. Get this shit out of the way. Yeah. So. Okay, we're in the process of trying to remove this adapter that holds the fan housing on, on your Type 4, and uh, you have to use this stupid dang on three prong wheel puller, <laughs> wheel remover, whatever the nomenclature is for the thing. <laughs> I hate and you can, can never get them lined up to try. And these things can be on like a bitch. I've, I've had them come off with a bang real easy, and I had them slide off with your hand, but I don't think this one's coming off with a hand. In fact, I'm getting this thing on there. Oh! Did you get lucky? Oh my god, that came off so damn easy. And look at all the rust deposit that was built up inside that thing. Wow, what a bonus. I cannot believe that calls for a celebration. Cheers. We got these, these two items removed. This was, the, of course, the hardest item to remove. Then you have your oil, rear oil seal or front oil seal, depending on which side of the engine and which way you want to call it. That's removal. And then the next thing that we have to do is to take off that bearing. And now we've, there's a circ clip on here that we're going to have to remove it. Once that's out of the way, then we'll have room enough to place the pulley remover on there and we'll be able to apply whatever gigantic tons of pressure that's needed to get this thing off. These things are pressed off or pulled off cold. When they go on, you have to heat them up. So they expand out, the crankshaft is cold, they'll slide right over it, and as it as the gear cools, it grasps onto the crankshaft and there's no space. Cools and contracts, yes. friction fit. Mm -hmm. So I don't have the tool in hand, so we're gonna have to get some uh circle tool should do it. We got one. of circlip removers. This particular one looks like it was designed exactly what we need to do. So we're going to place it in here. Now usually sometimes these things might go flying out into outer space or they'll do exactly what I just did. 
or it'll come popping off and get me between my fingernail and my finger. Well, we should have safety goggles on. Yeah, we should, and I'm the one guy that does it. Oh, <laughs> Let's try it like this and see what happens. Oh, oh you yeah, got it. we got it. Here in the now, it's out of the way. Yes, it is. Now see if you're Superman, you can pull those gears off. It's right. not moving. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think I have this thing. It it says the type gear, type four gear side, and this one says type one gear side. So what about type three side? And one are the same. I know. <laughs> Had to rest. Look at this thing, it's almost like perfect. What Look at type this. five engine. This is awesome. Now the goal is to, once we have removed that circlip, the goal is to take your uh, distributor drive gear and your camshaft gear off. Uh, when I go to build my engine, um, for my Type 4 engine for the square back, these gears are not going to be at an angle like this, they're going to be straight cut gears. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives you a little, a little bit more performance and it sounds cool as hell. How's it so, sound? It sounds like you got a turbo or supercharged engine in there. Make the sound. <laughs> I will make the sound in a few months. <laughs> so, you see what we did. This one is great. This one uh, is good for getting uh, the Type 3 and the Type 1 gears out of the way, but you can see it would never fit over that. It never, it's too small. So, here we go. We're going to apply pressure here. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> well, the great thing is, is that it really doesn't have to be all that tight in there, Ooh, does it? That didn't sound good, but... Well, it's breaking free. Yes, barn free. As free as a gear goes. Shut up, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> have another beer, Bill. You should. It's, it's sliding moving. good, man. It's sliding real easy. I love this tool. Moving or is American tool made. Well, hopefully the tool is not stretching. If it is, we're going to call CB Performance and get our money back. <laughs> this is American made steel. Nice heavy duty construction. I love it. And look, it's even marked by the people that made it. I guess the ideal thing it would have been if I got a socket this proper size and used a proper ratchet. Yeah, I like these. You can go around in a circle too. Yes, I can. Around a circle. I can do that, but it'll hit the table. Really? Yes. Is it that long? Mm -hmm. Man, Bill, you got a long one, Bill. Mm -hmm. Click. <laughs> no, there it is, man. <laughs> Missed it by a quarter, man. Get get a saw and we'll cut a hole in the table. Hey, I don't think Don would mind. No. Something's happening. Yeah. That was either my elbow popping or oh, no, it's, it's moving at that point. I mean, you can really see it. Yeah. yeah. Are you video? Oh yeah, it's got video really. Hurry up! I'm running out of energy. Put it on fast forward or something. Put an impact on that. Oh, god, that'd be a good idea. Might destroy the tool too. Yeah, true. Ask me how I know. Might destroy me. <laughs> Strip it out. Did that to one of my ball joint pullers. I was removing wheel studs with it. Oh yeah. And oh, it worked really nice to remove the studs, though. I mean, it came out mm -hmm. great, but mm -hmm. by the time I got done with the fifth one, it took a shot. Yep. All the threads were ruined. Was it Harbor Freight? As a matter of fact, it was. <laughs> Take it back. Oh, yes, it's a hand tool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing is, I modified it a little bit with, yeah. a, with a, a grinder to make it fit better on the, uh, the hub. Yeah. Jose Lugo, if you're watching this, brother, this is this is one step forward here. By next week, I'll have that crack bait. Crank shaft put together. Oh shit, almost not my friend. Again, beer. you almost ruined your beer. You better drink it up and get rid of it. Didn't foam over that. Oh, it's trying to. It's trying to. No, never mind. Stop. <laughs> Alright, we both spilled beer on ourselves today. Actually, and we're not even drunk yet. <laughs> it's not even beer, it's root beer. So, you kids at home when are looking at this video. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Step number one, crack a beer. Yeah. <laughs> no, not cracking beer. <laughs> cracking beer? It's cracking rum. Yeah, cracking rum. I don't like cracking rum. I don't either. It burns Black your, magic. It burns your innards. It burns everything. It burns my taste buds. It's torture. Taste bud torture. Watch this thing fly off it. 
hit me. This gear should be free. Hey. And you see your spacer right there. Spice finger. How about that? Yeah. This one will be free in just a bit. I love this tool. You can see, and I know there's going to be comments about the beer consumption. Yeah, our first beer. <laughs> Too bad, so sad. If you don't like it, don't watch it, right? That's the way I feel. Yay. <clears throat> Go ahead and put the comments down there. We'll delete them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, comment on this video. Yeah, Tell me what you think a little bit about this how-to stuff with Wild Bill. Yeah. And, of course, the Rare Air Volkswagen Club of... Uh, well, I'm sorry. Rare Air Emerald Coast Volkswagen Club of Pensacola, Florida. Yeah. It's a big group of us, and we come right around right the here. Don's Garage yeah. once a month. It's a Saturday for tech session. You Some guys of have you seen don't know where already. Pensacola is. It's marked by a big Volkswagen emblem on the map. Most of the time it gets cut off in regular Florida maps because when they crop it down, they say, ah, there's nothing out there. I oh, beg your pardon. It's just us. Lower Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> this, this house is about 10 miles from the border of Alabama and Florida. When I say border, that's what I mean. This is great. This is a good tool. Yeah, I could have done this quicker by putting a wrench on it, but I you did put a wrench love. On it. I know, I know. This is an adjustable <laughs> wrench. It's a variable. Or as I like size. to say, an adjustable spanner, because that weirds yeah. people out for some reason. It's a spanner. Of course, Sam would love that term. I think it's more popular over in England. But yeah. yeah, I say that here and it drives people be, crazy. <laughs> oh look! Oh, we have. Lift off. Yes, we do. I'm gonna lift it off. Okay, we're all done. End of video. One of the things you gotta remember about this particular gear is these two marks right here. When you go to reassemble this thing and you're sliding it on, you got a one one shot at it before you have to get your gear puller out and try it again because you didn't get it on and it froze up halfway in there. But make sure that those two marks are facing towards the back of the vehicle. Because that's the marks that you use Actually. when your cam, with your cam, mm -hmm. the cam has a single point on it, and you line that right in there, and it'll put it in perfect alignment that's with your, your cam shaft. So that's timing. your tip of your day. So it'll mount this way, yeah. and it looks the same. But guess what? When you go to try to you line up your cam, your there's no dots. So anyway, uh, I am sorry, I could not be I finding there's your no dots. dots. <laughs> Now this looks pretty. This looks pretty damn good. These bearings do too. I might save these damn bearings. Hear that, Butch? I'm saving some. Uh oh. Oh God. Uh oh. <laughs> Where's the book? Where's the book? Yeah. Does the book say you can do this? Yeah, the book says you can do it. That's it. Okay, so let's look and see. Now I imagine you probably could have heated that a little too with a torch or uh, a heating gun or something. You can, but help a little bit. It, it, all of the heat would sink right into the crank and you, it would be neutralized. It, it would, but if there's you could have anything sticking it together, I guess the, it would help. This spacer it makes no difference to what position it goes in. Okay. And there's a keyway on it also, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. So you can't put the gear on wrong except for upside down. Hmm. Or backwards or whatever. Right. Okay. How about the uh, distributor gear? Is there a wrong way for that? Nope. They're all the same. Doesn't matter which way you put it on, it's, it's going to work. That's good news. I never have experience with those. Mm -hmm. The brat, this is made out of uh, a heavy duty bronze or brass. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I know is if you are building an engine and you go to turn the crankshaft uh, without a distributor drive gear in it, it will chew this mother up. Ooh. I mean, and then you got to tear the whole fucking, I mean, the whole thing apart again. I know by firsthand experience. Yes. <laughs> it will make yes, a mess. Yes, I did that once. And so the ideal, oh, man. the ideal thing is when you're building this thing, and you'll see when we get into the assembly, once you've laid your crankshaft down into the case half, Okay, and, and everything's mounted in there. Go ahead, line up your distributor, okay? Uh, put your rods in the position of number one firing, okay? Line up your distributor and put on there and tighten up the bolt on the distributor onto the gear and you'll never have that problem again. You'll never damage that gear. So, anyway. All right, so the only thing that's left to do is to get these old connecting rods off, which probably are gonna be recyclable. Uh, and uh, right in the bin. Mm -hmm. we're putting <laughs> our, our counterbalanced uh, nut 
not a countermount crank, but we're putting a, a, a crankshaft back in there and using H-beam rods, uh, mainly because they're stronger and mainly because you can't hardly buy these things really? anymore. Yeah. They're, they Aren't they lighter also? Oh, uh, the, the H ones are. The H yes. ones are, mm -hmm. yeah. And they're easier to balance than these. So, so that's it. Aren't they balanced from the manufacturer? Uh, they within a are, few grams or something? Yeah, within a few grams, but um, you will weigh all of them separately. Mm -hmm. And the least uh, weight is what you'll have to scrape metal off of in, st in strategic areas to make it equal that. Now, if you happen to scrape one too far, it becomes the lightest one. I mean, it could be like <laughs> that cutting the, cutting the legs off of a table, cut an inch off of the table, and you just keep going around. And next thing you know, the table's <laughs> on the floor. But yeah, you got to be careful with that. Well, of course, that's a whole separate video for itself. Exactly. But what part of the uh, the uh, rod do you grind? Where do you cut it down at? Well, on the H fours, they have uh, specific areas uh, that are designated where it's not going to weaken mm -hmm. the, the the structural. Uh, part of the of the of the rod uh, and when we get into the actual video one of that uh, videotaping of that when we're balancing these things out um, we'll uh, get into where exactly you have to take the metal off of it so which is a fancy way of saying I don't want to go in a box and <laughs> dig them out of the box and get the cosmoline so all over my specific to the certain kind of rod that you have yeah, yeah, yeah okay so that's yeah. why we don't have the answer for you straight up so mm -hmm. it'll be separate for another video yeah these um, these particular ones right here like I say they look in pretty damn good shape so I'm gonna get a, um, a wrench and get these things off and these right. you can see they haven't been pinged they don't do that anymore for some reason Ping. Right? yeah these things are designed once you get them to the proper torque, they're locked or nothing. Like that. But that is a Aren't very. It's supposed to be turned a certain way, though. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. the, the flat side facing out or something. Doesn't no, hurt, hurt. only motorcycles like yeah, that. Yeah, okay. motorcycles. Are I have no experience with the Volkswagen engine yeah. taking a ride. I've only done motorcycles. Yeah, well, it's 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 a little the, it's a little more mission critical than that. Look at that. Thing. Well, yeah, no. it can be because sometimes case clearances matter. Mm -hmm. So you have to have the flat end of the bolt yep. facing outwards so it doesn't hit the inside of the you case because it's of, that close. You got plenty of room with these. Now, when I get into building um, the Type 1 engine, uh, if you go to a certain size crankshaft, then you've got to enlarge the inside of the case out and everything. Mm -hmm. Or you can get to what they call a bubble case. It's already pre-ground out, if you will. And the knee part, they call it a bubble case because instead of uh, shortening the metal from where you have to grind out on the inside of the case, mm -hmm. it's, it's already expanded out, and it's the same thickness all the way around. It's casted with a dome on the top. Yes, yeah. yeah. And that keeps and that uh, keeps the, the structure of the uh, thing good. It's so weird looking too. It looks like they they got overinflated. Yeah, <laughs> they look like Nasty they're just little, full of air. Nasty little fuckers.